Okay, part 11. Here we go. Here's that same slide, and you should convince yourself that the 60% and 40% are indeed what we, what we would predict for our products if we didn't know any better, if we didn't know that there was a preference for those hydrogens in the middle to be pulled off or abstracted, as they put it. Uh, these percentages of 28 and 72 can't be predicted, but those are fi found to be the actual percentages when this reaction is carried out. And so this next slide shows how we can calculate the degree of which we have a preference for making the 2-chlorobutane as opposed to 1-chloro. Those percentages that are actually found, 72% for the 2-chloro, 28% for 1-chloro, those are divided by the number of hydrogens that could be removed to give that product. And remember, there's four possible hydrogens that could be removed to give us the 2-chloro product. We've got six hydrogens, any one of which can be removed to make 1-chlorobutane. And so when you reduce those ratios down, it turns out to be about 3.9 to 1, almost 4 to 1. And so we can say, well, like it says here, there's a 4 to 1 preference for abstracting hydrogens that come off of secondary positions. Because in order to make what's a secondary chlorobutane, the 2-chlorobutane, uh, that, that means we have to remove a secondary hydrogen. And remember, that would be a more stable radical than what we see happening if we react uh, you know, in a way that gives us the one chloro product. If we're making one chlorobutane, we have to proceed by making a primary radical, and that's not as stable, not as stable as the secondary one. So even though we've got more hydrogens available to be removed to give us that first product, uh, we don't end up with more of the first product. And so this kind of proportion is generally found to be true for any reaction in which we can compare a secondary position to a primary one. So we get more of the primary, excuse me, more of the secondary chloro product compared to a corresponding primary product. That helps us plan ahead. It tells us if we want to make one chlorobutane, uh, we're not going to make very much of it. Not if there's a possibility of the two chloro isomer forming. Here's the same comparison in which we have a molecule, this isobutane here, that only has primary and tertiary positions. This one hydrogen poking up is attached to a carbon with three other carbons, so that position is tertiary. And if that hydrogen gets removed, we actually would get this product over here on the far right, tertiary butyl chloride. You want to convince yourself that the other nine hydrogens any one of those nine can be removed and replaced with a chlorine to give you this first product. I just happen to be showing this methyl group on the right is the one that's getting involved. But all nine of these hydrogens over here on the left are equivalent. So if we didn't know any better, we might expect to get a lot of that first product because there's so many available hydrogens to be removed. If we don't remove this one magic hydrogen right in the middle, we don't get this second product. And even though we don't get a higher percentage of that product, we get what's higher than expected. And here's the corresponding calculation like we did on the last slide. We get 37% of a product that has to involve removing of just one particular hydrogen, the one that's at the tertiary position. We've got nine hydrogens possible to uh, be removed to give us the other chlorinated product. And we do get 63% of that. And then when you reduce this down, you find that you're getting an abnormally amount of this second product. And so we can say what it says here at the top, that we are making the product that, gives, that results from the more stable radical, and we're doing it to a much greater extent than what we would predict otherwise. There's about a 5 to 1 preference for removing a tertiary hydrogen from one that's primary, because the corresponding radical is so much more stable. If you answer this question at the bottom right, uh, you hopefully can convince yourself that your expected proportion would be 90% of this second product, excuse me, 90% of this first product, and only 10% of the other one, because only one of the 10 hydrogens can be removed to give us that second product. But we don't get 90 to 10, we get 63 to 37.